Hello everyone, my name is Abbas Jain and with me here today I have Alex from Team 14270 from Romania, Quantum Robotics. They were the second pick of the, a semi-finalist alliance, the fourth ranked alliance at the MTI today. And they just did amazing in all of their qualification and playoff matches. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you are a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. All right, Alex, let's start off with your drivetrain. You know, one thing I noticed about your guys' robot, it's really stable, but it's also really heavy. So can you walk me through your drivetrain, the desi uh, design decision to, you know, go with a heavy robot, but still have a very skinny chassis so you can go through the gap? Yeah, sure. So first of all, uh, this is our, like, chassis after we rebuilt. Uh, before, we used to run a pass-through with the same uh, mechanism drivetrain with clearance. And because we rebuilt, we still wanted to keep that robot going through the gap. So we have this very, like, 13-inch wheelbase. And because of the clearance, we were a mechanism drive, right? So we wanted to still be able to play some defense on the shared hub. So what we did is that we added this part to our robot, which is a butterfly pod that uh, drops down and is able to, like, it's driven by the intake motor, which allows it to use up to five motors at once to push other lines. And also, because of the very small clearance here between the chassis and the pod, when you try to push it and this is down, you cannot, even if it's unpowered, because it will try to run it into the direction, which will not work. Yeah, and so did you guys use this at all in any of your qualification or playoff matches? And like, what were the results you saw from it? Okay, so it's a funny story. Actually, we used it only once in our qualification matches. We were running on a pretty iffy battery, and it was against like uh, technical difficulties, so it was against a very good team uh, yeah. pushing. And we actually blew our fuse because we have a very heavy direction again for defense. Mm -hmm. But we used it again in semifinals with better batteries, and we had, we had very good results. Like against the best pushing team at this competition, we were barely pushed at all. If not, we actually even pushed them better. So we're very happy with our results with that. Yeah, excellent. And you know, you talked about how your butterfly drive is chained to your intake. So let's just go on to your intake. Can you walk me through your intake? Any iterations it went through this season? You know, is this your first version of the intake, or is this like really like a later fourth or fifth or something like that? Yeah, sure. So this is our first uh, uh, iteration on this robot. Before we had a previous like two iterations, but this is the first one, first one since we rebuilt. So basically, the element just comes in here, picked up by these uh, two pieces of surgical tubing, and then it gets lifted up by this servo then when the intake tubes reverse it gets launched it gets launched through this uh, one-way latch here that allows the element to pass through and fall in the outtake box but not reach further into the other intake so it, to prevent jams however and we also have a dual-sided intake that's because we want to be able to be very versatile on the field. So we want to play alliance hub and shared hub at the same field. Whether, whether our team wants to like, uh, switch with us mid-match. Like for example, if they're doing carousel and we already want the shared hub, we can go and fill in the alliance hub for more points at the end. Yeah, and you know, you keep mentioning that you guys did a rebuild. So before we get into your extension and your deposit and all these other subsystems, when did you guys decide to do a rebuild in the season? Uh, yeah, so we decided to do a rebuild after, uh, I think, regionals. When we had our uh, bot do, I think, a 4 plus 1 autonomous, yeah, with the pass-through. And what we see, what we saw was like the bottleneck was that if we, even with a good pass-through, we couldn't like reach higher than 4 plus 1, maybe 5 plus 1. Like 6 plus 1 was very hard with the pass-through. So what we said is like, okay, we have to rebuild into a side out take, which takes a much simpler path and also allows you to extend like a lot while you're uh, driving towards the shipping hub, which is what we exactly did. I see. And you know, would you advise teams the next year if they're planning on doing a rebuild? Would you advise them to do a rebuild, or like, what advice would you give them before they start a rebuild? Honestly, I feel like the one thing that we took into consideration the most, and the one thing that made this rebuild work at all before states, was the fact that we calculated our time very effectively. Like before, like a month before starting the rebuild. We took like, okay, this is how many weeks we have to carry it, this is how many weeks it will, will take to assemble it. We take one or two weeks for practice and debugging everything, and until it actually worked at the competition, which was the most important thing. Like, I feel if you want to do a rebuild, you really have to calculate it very well. Yeah, I think that's an excellent uh, answer. So let's go on to your extension system. You know, you guys have a crazy fast extension. It just goes all the way out to that Alliance-specific hub, and it's very consistent. Why don't you walk us through that? 
Yeah, sure. So I'll start by doing the vertical extension. This is actually driven driven by just one Gobilla 13 to 1 ratio motor. Uh, it's a spring. It's a strung only on one side because we don't have space for two motors. So or running a whole like axe through the uh, through the system, which means we only spring sprung it on one side, and then we have it very well cross based here, both on the bottom and the top as well. Now let's go to over the horizontal extension. These are just. Uh, three sets of, Mis of Misumi 230 slides, which are not actioned by string, however, because they are super smooth, they allow us to like apply very little torque when pushing them and still be very fast, which means we use this, those 2DS servos to push the linkage out in, in, a, in a very fast manner. And before, we used to have this, like, very, with these three printed rods, but they were very flopsy and not consistent, so what we did is we took uh, alumin aluminum shaft beams and put uh, steel threaded rods through them, which then we wrapped into a carbon fiber tube to, to ensure the fact that they're not, not, not like bending at all and they're very sturdy. And like the last stage is this small arm here which is super small to be able to play shared effectively like we can place as close to us as possible and it's driven by two uh, low profile servo blocks into the servos and there's this small linkage to open the door. Yeah, no, that's really great. I mean, everything's worked on your robot really consistently. Obviously, the playoffs were just super tough matches, you know, and it could have gone either way, any of the matches. Uh, before we end the interview, what's, like, one piece of advice you would give in general to teams that are starting out new next year or just, you know, don't have as much experience as really veteran teams like you guys? I feel like if you want to do well in FTC, you have to, like, spend a lot of time thinking before you actually do something or, like, commit to a design. I feel like the most important part is actually brainstorming and figuring out your niche, like, when the Fred Frenzy drop with, uh, team was dropped, you like a lot of teams like should have went for the shared hub, like for a shared hub design. That would have helped a lot of rookie teams, for example. Like a very important thing is to find your niche and to. Uh, um, brainstorm a lot and actually do prototyping a lot of them. Yeah, thank you, Alex. I mean, that's a fantastic review of your whole robot. Really good advice for teams in the future. I'm really looking forward to see what you guys do in future seasons. I'm sure you guys will be a powerhouse team once again next season. Thank you. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm a boss. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Did you know that over 30% of the student population at Kettering University was in high school robotics? These same students have received a portion of over $7 million from robotic scholarships from Kettering University. See why so many in first choose to go to Kettering University at Kettering.edu. If you're a college student or recent graduate looking for an incredible internship, take a look at Stryker. Stryker provides a housing stipend, great pay, and an opportunity to work with state-of-the-art medical technology equipment. Discover why so many FIRST alumni are coming to Stryker for their internship or career at careers.stryker.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.